Stephanie. Good afternoon, Dr. Lisa. I'm so glad to be here with you today. I remember when I met you in Detroit, I was so uh, I was so excited to meet you because of uh, your enthusiasm and the things you were saying about COVID. So introduce yourself quickly. Tell people who you are. Okay, I'm Stephanie Tanksley, and I'm an employee of Harvest Sherwood Foods, and I've been um, really advocating in the workplace for people to get the vaccine. You know, drop the fear, and just you know. Um, just take the vaccine, you know, and just get that that death threat of COVID off the table. And so Why some people I've been able to convince. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. And I know we came out there to do some education. Do you think it helped? I know it did. I talked to people after you left and they were like, yes, she was really informative. And I just felt like, you know, a lot of my questions were answered. And, um, and we're hoping that you can go to Atlanta and share that same message. Um, after you Absolutely. left, I sent an email and asked them if you could go. And they were like, well, we'll see Steph, but we really need her down there. Bad, really bad. <laughs> just, let her, just let us know. One of us, one of the grapevine doctors will be there in a hurry. All right. Um, so why do you think people are afraid to take the vaccine? I think that they've heard so many negative things from people that care about them. And so they trust the word of their loved ones more than they do like the media or doctors or you know, anything that they hear on the internet. And so they just, they're just scared. It really is a fear factor. And although they won't say it's fear, they'll just say, I don't want to, or whatever they, you know, say, but I think it's really, they're just afraid and they don't want to take any chances with it. So. Wow. But what are they hearing specifically? Have they shared with you? Some people have, some people have told me that, you know, they thought they would get really sick and that they would catch COVID from the vaccine. Um, they thought that, you know, they would, if they took the vaccine, they could give it to other people because they would have the virus in their body. You know, so that was some of the fear, fearful things people were saying. Like, if I take the vaccine, will I be taking, well, I'll have it in my body. So I'll spread it to my family members. And I'm like, I don't think it works like that, but. No, yeah. it doesn't. And it doesn't we, should just take a, <laughs> we should take a second right here and just let people know the vaccine and any vaccine, not just the COVID-19 vaccine, vaccines do not give you the infection there designed to prevent. So there's no coronavirus that's active enough in the vaccine to give you COVID-19. We expect people to get to have side effects or they feel sick, but I think that's a good thing. I want people to recognize the body is mounting a response to the vaccine. So it's arming itself to protect you in case you come in contact with coronavirus. So those aches and pains, it's, you know, it's almost like there's a, a fight going on inside the body. It's uh, getting ready, you know, getting ready for battle. So that's why we have fever, chills, muscle aches. Some people feel tired for a couple of days. I certainly did when I got the vaccine. So just like medicines, vaccines have side effects as well. But we're we're fortunate, you know. So many people, over 120 million people, have gotten a shot of the vaccine. You know, one of the three vaccines, and so. The, the information we're getting about vaccines is really positive. What yeah, else are you hearing? Well, I'm hearing um, just things like they just, they're, they're afraid, you know, well, what's gonna happen? You know, am I gonna, one, one lady said, I heard that you get Bell's palsy from it or Ball's palsy. I'm like, I, I, didn't, I haven't heard that. And then somebody else said, yeah, it's making people, it's making women not be able to get pregnant. I heard that argument, you know, and then some people just have, you know, religious or political reasons why they won't take it. They just don't trust, you know, the government to take care of them. So it's just a lot of reasons, but I just think that people need to really do their own research and, and think for themselves when it comes to their health. Yeah, we'll talk about that research in a second, but I want to uh, touch on those things you just said. So the vaccines don't cause infertility. People say, well, how do you know? Because we haven't had these vaccines long enough. The vaccines don't work that way to cause infertility, particularly the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are made with messenger RNA, which is actually um, one of the, the lab scientists explained it to me like a Snapchat message. So it really just goes in, it gives the instructions to make the spike protein on the coronavirus, which is the part of coronavirus that makes people sick. And it says to the immune system, when you see this, 
when you see this spike protein, you need to get ready to destroy it. And then it gives the message and then it's gone. So I've heard someone else describe this like the Mission Impossible movies. In the beginning, when Ethan gets the message and it says this message will self-destruct after you watch it. So you can think of it a little bit like that. Okay. Um, the Bell's palsy, you know, so there have been some cases of Bell's palsy around the time people got vaccinated. And I can't say it's not from the vaccine, but the rate of Bell's palsy in people who've gotten vaccinated is much lower than just the natural rate of people getting Bell's palsy in the population. And that's pretty much true for the other side effects we're seeing, including the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, the one that was paused for the six cases and over 6 million doses, the rate of blood clots in people just in, in poor health in general, but also people with COVID is much higher than that. So it's unfortunate we saw those side effects, but we, we expect side effects. These vaccines have been shown to be safe. And I just hope people get the information they need to feel comfortable. Because now you heard CDC says that people who've been fully vaccinated can take their mask off indoors. Yes. What do yes. you think about that? I'm not going to take my mask off because I think there are going to be people who haven't taken the vaccine who are saying, finally, I can take this mask off. And they're going to be out infecting people. And I hate to so, think like that, but I, I really just believe that's going to happen. But is that, but do you think that's a danger to you? No, I don't think it is, but still, it just looks scary. <laughs> it just looks a little scary, like yeah. Your I think it's I think it's pretty good news that the CDC has encouraged people to take their masks off indoors. I just wish, first of all, I wish they had waited a little bit longer to make sure the drop we're seeing in cases is sustained. But I think the point they were making is that the the research is showing that people who are fully vaccinated are really at almost no risk of getting severe COVID or dying from, dying from COVID-19, and that's great news, and that they can't transmit it to someone else. So it's not that the fully vaccinated people are at risk from people who are not vaccinated, but if you have a crowd of people who are all unvaccinated, they're at risk for getting COVID-19. The other reason I'm, I wish they had waited is because as, you're, as we're talking about, the rates of vaccination are pretty low in the black community, right? They are, yes. So, so. if, um, as you say, if people start taking their masks off, whether they're vaccinated or not, and we have very low rates of vaccination, what's going to happen? We'll have to wait and see, but, you know, I think it's going to be a social experiment. Yeah, I mean, it's we, uh, this is just something we'll have to wait and see what happens. You know, it's the human human effect. So, yeah. So, what about um, you? Heard the vaccine for Pfizer for kids is now available. What do you think about that? I think parents should take take their kids and get their va get their vaccines for the COVID. I mean, I just I really. Um, as a parent, if I had a child that was going to school and exposed to other children and teachers and really just basically the public, I would want to protect them. And so if the vaccine is available for their protection, I would, I would have my child vaccinated. Yeah. Well, what do you think is the biggest thing we can do to encourage people who haven't gotten vaccinated to get the vaccine? I think that people that have been vaccinated should share their good news with other people. Hmm. They should share it. They should post on social media. They should be... Um, uh, available to answer questions about how they felt, you know, and just kind of share their experiences to help other people understand that it's okay. You know, nothing's going to happen to you except where you'll be protected against COVID-19. And so um, one of the things I did when I took my vaccine, I posted it on social media and I got calls from my aunts and I was saying, well, how do you feel? I'm thinking about it. And I'm, I'm really worried. And I'm like, I feel great. And I'll show you, I'll put a picture up when I take my second one. And they were looking for it and they said, hey, I saw you took your second shot. How do you feel? I'm like, I feel great. And so as a result of my experience and how great I was feeling, I talked to them all about, you know, the soreness in the arm and all that. And so they really 
they were motivated to take the vaccine based on my experience. And some of them called and said, I was watching you to see what was happened to you. And when you were okay, I said, okay, let me go ahead and take it too. So that did help. It did help some of my family members to make the decision. That's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, I was excited to do it because I'm like, we need to we need to get past this. We need to get past it. And I didn't want to see any of my family members to die, you know, die from COVID. I didn't want to yeah. see that. And it's totally avoidable. Do you have any young people in your family who don't want to get the vaccine? Anyone over 16? Well, a few nephews and some nieces that are a little hesitant. Um, some cousins that are like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been fine so far, so I'll be okay, you know. Just, and I think that the reasons they have is just they don't, um, they just don't want to, some of them just don't want to be bothered with the vaccine. They're like, if everybody else takes it, I'll be fine then. I've, somebody has said that to me. Hey, well, if you take it, I'll be okay. It, my vaccine doesn't protect you. So that was, you know, my immediate response to that. But yeah, some, some of the younger people are very hesitant. They just think that we'll be okay. I'm strong enough. I'm healthy enough. I'll be fine. Yeah, I hear that a lot too. Let me give you a scenario though. Let's say you decide to have a family gathering and you want to invite everybody, all your nieces and nephews. Some people are vaccinated and some people are not vaccinated. How would you feel about everybody mixing together? And, and what, what would you say to people who are not vaccinated? You know, I think I would do a survey before they came. You know, part of your oh. RSVP would be vaccinated or not vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to do that, but, you know, then you put other people at risk if you if we all come together and you're not vaccinated. And so um, I, I would have some real concerns with bringing together groups like that for barbecues or anything. I, I would be really concerned, really concerned. And I think we'd all have to still wear a mask, even if we were outside sometimes, because people talk and they laugh and they get... You know, the more food and, and wine that's shared, the happier people become and the more comfortable and relaxed they are. And so then here, you know, when the guards come down, the exposure heightens. So yeah. I just, you know, I just wouldn't be so comfortable bringing a group together that's not fully vaccinated. Yeah, and I think this is the, the hesitation people have in accepting the CDC recommendation about taking off the mask indoors. And also, I mean, if you think about it, We've now become accustomed to wearing these masks. They're a bit of a safety safety blanket, right? And so like we're mentally and emotionally uh, attached to our masks. I have to admit, I'm not. I have trouble remembering my mask sometimes. And outside, I rarely wear a mask, especially if there's no one around. Um, and that's one thing I want to recommend to anybody who's watching to spend time outdoors. That is a really safe place to be. Even before we had vaccines, we knew that transmission of coronavirus was less likely if you're outside. So, and now the weather's getting nice and it's, it's great to be outside after spending so much time indoors and on Zoom. So, well, I really appreciate you being here. Is there anything else you want to talk about or anything else you want to tell me? I just want to thank you for coming and sharing your information with us at Harvest Sherwood. And I look forward to seeing you come to Atlanta. Okay, well, I'll call us up and we'll be there. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Take care.